did, did you know that stuff like this was going on and you, you knew that another revelation, another investigation like this was going to come out? Yeah, I think we all knew about it. Uh, unfortunately, we all knew about it because this is just the top of the iceberg and we had a clear idea about that when we were having the both uh, Taxi Committee 1 and Taxi Committee 2 because we had to extend the, the, the duration of, of the committee. And we all know that. And then we had Panama Papers, Panama Papers, and now we have Paradise Papers, and we all know that. We know that the, there's a huge percentage of, of world GDP, which is somewhere, but we, but we don't know how to, to what's, reach it. What's, in terms of what your committee found out and the work that, that happened there, and your, just your opinion and, and research, what's the biggest source of... Uh, you know, tax avoidance, tax evasion, money laundering in the EU. What, can you pinpoint any real reason why it's so prevalent or apparently so prevalent? I think that the main reason has to do with the regulation that we had, we had especially after the 70s and with much more emphasis after the 80s, and it has to do with that. In fact, before that, it was very, it was much more difficult to, to have schemes like these ones. Uh, the richest people in the world would put their money in Switzerland, uh, but not like we have now. And, the, and this is a, a huge problem indeed, because at the same time that we are imposing to people austerity measures, uh, that we are imposing a lot of sacrifices, that the regular workers and small and medium enterprises are paying their taxes, uh, the one percent and the zero point one percent of the richest people in the world are just avoiding it. Well, you mentioned. I mean, let's bring it to an EU context. In the EU context, we are already at the level of the competition amongst member states, and I think that's also to do with the fact that with this specialization of the countries, and uh, the fact that okay, we have Germany as a big trade country and producer, and then we have like Portugal, my country would be a services country and tourists for tourism or we have, I don't know, France more devoted to agriculture and the uh, United Kingdom to financial, financial services. services. And then some of the countries didn't have really a specialization like the Netherlands and Luxembourg. So they, it turned out that they became specialized in being, and I say it, I do mean it, in being offshores inside, tax havens inside the European Union. And that's the thing I wanted to, to, to really get an idea of. Are there some countries that you would identify in the EU which are really particularly bad at these kind of practices? So yeah, in the moment that the rules of competition are not based on competition amongst enterprises, multinationals, whatever, but are amongst member states and countries, and when some of the countries are benefiting from the taxes that should be paid in other countries, and thus we don't have a budget consolidation in some of the countries because of that. What, I mean, what country you mentioned, what countries specifically are the real... We know, we all know about Luxembourg and we all know about the Netherlands, about the specific rules. But we also have Belgium here. We have very, very specific rules which in fact enable uh, a less, much lower payments in terms of taxes for the big multinationals, the tax rulings and all these things. But uh, what, what is happening is that we have a lot of findings, we have a lot of conclusions uh, associated to tax rulings and all these things. But at the end, we move from committee to committee to committee to investigation to another one and at the end we have uh, this impunity uh, system. Uh, in fact, the only persons who have been blamed for these issues are not those who try to avoid to pay, pay their taxes but the whistleblowers. And what's, the, what's the reason for that? Is it, is it a case that there are genuinely member states within the EU which deliberately obstruct and frustrate progress when it came, comes to clamping down on tax avoidance measures and I think that the responsibility is much broader than that, to be honest. Uh, I don't think it's only by the pressure of one or two member states or three member states that we are now where we are. It was a way of proceeding and accepting that this is normal, that there are specific rules to benefit billionaires and multinationals and that's accepted at all levels of decision making and that's for me the most uh, 
an acceptable thing, to one, be honest. I mean, one of the big things which is coming out this year is this blacklist of countries which have been identified by the European Union as tax havens. Um, what do you think? Do you think this is a good start? Do you think this is going to have any teeth? Honestly, I think that in the moment that we have very specific rules and distinct rules inside the European Union, it should be more uh, about to do what I do and not about do what I say. Because we need to fix al also inside the European Union a lot of uh, problems which emerge from this competition amongst member states when it comes to tax uh, payers and especially, of course, they voted to benefit those who are who have more. So, of course, the blacklist is important, but much more important than this, in my perspective, is to not accept it inside the European Union. And, of course, the tax havens, the European tax havens, are not only inside the European Union. Yeah. They are across the world, like 80% of the total. So, are you are you optimistic that the EU can? through perhaps, you know, starting with a blacklist, but, you know, in stages, be able to? We need a lot of political will and courage. Do you think that's ever going to be achieved in, in honest in reality? This, in this moment, uh, to be honest, I, I think that after several committees and the conclusions, it seems there's a lack of political will. But I also think that we have no option but be optimistic, because otherwise it will be running to the bottom and, and that's... That cannot be our purpose. So, yeah, I think that if more and more things like this become public and people understand how unfair is the system and how it is prepared just to protect the richest ones, I think then citizens will demand us to do our proper job, which is to be in line with uh, uh, tax justice and not injustice.